I think that people start with data to make decisions. And that's, in my opinion, the wrong way to do it in 2024. Mm -hmm. Instead of starting with data, and we'll give an example. What are some of the most like common mistakes you're seeing sellers in general make on Amazon? I created some funny commandments to go over this. So commandment number one, never go out of stock. There is nothing <laughs> more damaging than going out of stock. And sophisticated sellers still F this up. The reason Thrasio went bankrupt is because they went out of stock on their top sellers across almost their whole portfolio. Most people don't know that, but that's a, that is a true thing that happened. Ridiculously, I can't believe they messed it up. Now, commandment two is like commandment number one. No, seriously, never go out of stock. Like that is so important. I made two slots in the Amazon commandments to just make sure people really understand that is so important. If you mess that up, you're messing up two of the major commandments. Now, as we get down into the nitty gritty, I'll just throw this random one out. But another commandment is don't launch too many variations. And this is a common mistake I frequently see sophisticated sellers make. And take the soaps that I launch, right? So I have on my desk here one soap that I, you know, I should never have sold. So if you look at the label here, it says pimple popper. Right, I made a teen musk scent set that included dirty socks, monkey farts, pimple popper. You get the idea. This was the worst variation set I've ever come up with. Now, I thought I was pretty funny. By the way, pimple popper smells amazing. <laughs> it's so good. But nobody wanted to buy this stuff. They didn't, they didn't get my sense of humor. And I can't blame them. It's pretty ridiculous. So with that in mind, I think that sellers sometimes just like, oh, I just, I'm going to go super deep and you know, I'm going to make 17 variations of my winning product combination. And what happens? Sales go down. They're usually very confused by this. How is that possible? How did my overall sales go down? And it's because of cannibalization. What happens? Let's say black is your best color and you launch it and then you start launching red, blue, and white. This could be clothing. This could be anything. Uh, it could be a kitchen set, gadget, right? like Zule Kitchen doing like 20 color variations. The difference between what Zule Kitchen does though is that they have a loss leader single color for $10 and then they sell their other colors for 20 and they make margin that way. And it's their way of their whole organic traffic scheme, if you will. But most sellers try to go to market with the same price across all variations. And then when you cannibalize, your SEO rankings can only show one variation in search results per parentage. In most categories, there are some exceptions. But what happens is, is that the black, which was selling 1,000 units a month, white shows up, starts selling 100, and black goes down to 900. So there's no net gain. Well, once black goes down to 900, what happens? The SEO starts to slip, and you're not ranked number one on that product keyword anymore. So then next month, you go down to 850, and then it goes down to 800. And blue and red are stealing 20 apiece. But overall, you're under that thousand units that you were at when you just had the single variation. So don't launch too many variations. You'd be way better off. So I sell these artisan men's soaps, way better off adding something completely different, maybe in the same category, but not the same soap product and selling something like, you know, do what Dr. Squatch does by selling a deodorant instead yeah. of just a soap. So here's another one. I think that people start with data to make decisions. And that's, in my opinion, the wrong way to do it in 2024. There's just too much data. Data paralysis is a real thing. Instead of starting with data, and we'll give an example, don't start with data to select a new source product. If you start with data, you're going to see the trends and jump on the Barbie bandwagon. But then three months after Barbie is out, it drops off a cliff. If you bought into the, you know, the fidget spinner trend, you might have bought a pallet or maybe even a freaking full container load of fidget spinners only to find out that everybody else has the same data and you have no branding position and you'll collapse post-launch. So instead of starting with data, I recommend you stick to what you know and understand. For example, I'm a chess player. I played in the US Open back in high school. I've been on the national circuit. I'm a really good chess player. I've beaten the CEO of chess.com, right? And I actually, we used to work for him, but that's a long story. So my point here is, if I was going to sell chess sets, 
I would know everything there was to know about chess sets. I would know, for example, that triple weighted pieces are superior. I would know that the vinyl board needs to be a certain thickness. I would know what kind of clock is preferred by the end user. Now, if I went and tried to launch, I don't know, dental bamboo floss, I wouldn't know the first reason why somebody would want to buy that, first of all. Second of all, if there was a dentist who was selling bamboo dental floss, he could be the actual brand avatar. He would have that leverage over me. He would understand the science about why bamboo fiber is superior over random you know, glide floss that I have on my desk here. I would have no idea. Now, that doesn't mean you should all go launch whatever your superior knowledge product is. But what it does mean is if you stick to what you know and understand and then go to the data to justify the selection, you're going to be way better off. And you're going to avoid Queen's Gambit style of sacrificing a pawn and then realizing, oh my gosh, the Netflix series hoo-ha is dead and launching it a year late. But for the brands that were selling chess sets before Queen's Gambit came out, then they saw the trend and took advantage of it. They did well. But for the brands who launched because of the trend, they don't exist anymore. So that's the mistake I think that you know nobody's talking about. And that's why I picked that one. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts on questions. See you in our next video.